What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV back here for some more content for you guys today and we're going through some more stats today as uh, now Conte has been here for the same amount of Premier League games as Nuno Espirito Santo. <laughs> so we're going to compare the stats. Uh, obviously, uh, it's been a massive uptake in form uh, since Conte has joined Spurs, but we're going to look even deeper into the stats to see if the stats bear that out as well. So I'm quite excited to see uh, what's going to come out from this one. Uh, yeah. But yeah, let's get into it. Because I remember, if you cast your mind back to the beginning of the season, I remember very clearly we um, we had played three games, or four games actually. We just lost our first game to Palace. Mm. And um, we were looking at the stats, and obviously our, it was three wins out of four. So it's like on the face of it, it looked like we'd had a good start to the season, we're playing well. But I remember when we drew down to the stats, I was like, I don't want to criticise Nuno, but if you look at the stats, we're actually not playing that well. We were like 19th and 20th. Yeah, for all, all the all, all these, these things. Stats, yeah. yeah, and I was like, like, if this continues, like he needs to improve his otherwise it isn't going to go yeah, well. It was never sustainable after those yeah, three games. Exactly. So I want to take a comparison um, from the Nuno tenure and the Conte tenure, kind of see how we're stacking up um, after Conte's first 10 games compared to Nuno's first 10 games and how much we have improved. Mm -hmm. And let's see if the form we are in is actually sustainable or is it, you know, are the results misleading? Because sometimes they can be. All right, well, on the face of things, let's go and look at the uh, the win, loss and draws and scores stats. Let's bring those yeah. up. So as you can see, 10 games played. Nuno won five of them. Conte won six. Uh, here's a big one. Nuno lost five of them. Conte has only lost one. Mm -hmm. uh, drawn. Nuno actually didn't draw any. And uh, Conte has drawn three games. Uh, in terms of how many we've scored, is a big difference there in terms of Nuno got nine goals, Conte has scored 17, conceded as well, there's a big difference there in 16 for Nuno, eight for Conte, and points is actually, it is better for Conte, but not that much better, um, 15 to 21. Well, it's interesting because um, you, it, it seems on the face of it not that much better, only six more points, but if you extrapolate that over a whole season, mm. um, that under Nuno, you're set for around 57 points and under Conte, you're set for 80 points. So there is quite a big difference, actually, when you when you when when it's points per game kind of yeah, extrapolated. Very true. Um, but in terms of wins, yeah, we actually only have one more win under Conte, but it's about the games we haven't, we, we're, that we're not losing, um, which has been the big difference. We're just a lot more harder to beat on the face of it. But, if, but yeah, so that's like the bare stats. Obviously, there's been a big improvement in results and points and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, is it worth going to look at um, who we played in that in those 10 game periods as well? You could argue that. I mean, under Nuno, we did play, um, we played United, West Ham away, we played Arsenal away, we played City at home, which we won. Um, but we have had some difficult games under Conte as well. We've had Liverpool at home, we've had Chelsea away. Um, obviously, Leicester away is not uh, an easy game. So um, we probably, I would say, Conte's had easier probably easier games but it's not but you know it is half and half in terms of it's not like it's all been easy for Conte yeah. and all been hard for Nuno and it's interesting because like in in the hard games under Nuno you know the Man City game the Wolves game uh, we got points in those games yes I we lost points under Nuno against teams where you wouldn't really expect us to lose points like Crystal Palace um, mm. I can't remember off the top of my head who else but Conte since he's come in he's put away the sides which we should be putting away yeah, and that and, we've and been he's also consistent. got points against better sides as well. Yeah, and our home form's obviously been great. We've uh, under Conte, it's five home games, four to wins. Be fair, the home form under Nuno was also good. We lost against Man United, which was his last game, and we lost against Chelsea. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and yeah, the and the other three won. So. Um, that's true. I guess to take into account, I think Conte has probably had easier games. I think yeah. that's undeniable, but. Um, Still, I still think that uh, you can take you can take a lot in general play about how you're playing against these teams. I think on the face of those stats, I mean, you can't because of the games that they've both had. I don't. You can take something away from it, but I think you can take a lot more away from the stats that we're going to get into in a minute. Yeah. So let's look. First of all, I will bring up. Um, these are the, some picked out offensive stats that we're looking at. So there's um, expected goals, there's shots, shots on target, there's shot creating actions, there's key passes and there's touches inside the box. And as you can see, um, 
I'll just go if we go through line by line. Uh, expected goals: one point zero two under Nuno, two point one three under Conte. So pretty much double shots. Yeah. We get five more shots a game. Shots on target. We get a couple more shots on target. Shot creating actions. That's a big one. Um, we get nine more per game under Conte than we have under Nuno. Key passes about about four more key passes. And then one of another big one: touches inside the box. 10 touches more inside the box under Conte than under Nuno. So am I right in saying those stats in the Nuno, in the Nuno tenure were all in the at least the lower half of the Premier League, if not the bottom three? Yeah, we were very low down and we were pretty much struggling. Um, it, it, was, look, it, was, um, it was very well known under Nuno. We struggled massively to create chances, didn't we? In, uh, especially in, in a lot of the big games. And it was, it was very difficult for us to really hurt the opposition. We barely... Look, shots on target, as you can see, we only had... Um, we had like 3.7 per game, but the XG was only 1.02, so we weren't really th in threatening positions. Mm. That's the crucial point. Under Conte, the expected goal was up to 2.13, which is, um, I think, third behind um, City and uh, Liverpool at the moment uh, since Conte took over. So much more improved. And as you can see, I think a very big one is touches inside the box. That's a massive one. We're really starting to get in, into the penalty area. We're starting to really threaten the opposition um, in at crucial moments. And I think 10 more touches touches inside the box pretty much um, each game is massive and the more you do that is the more you're going to be um, hurting the opposition especially we've got players like Kane and Son in around the penalty area the goals are going to cut they're going to flow and that's um, what, the most impressive thing so far um, about content also the shot creating actions nine more and the shot creating action is defined as um, uh, an offensive action directly leading to a shot such as a pass a dribble or drawing a foul and so we're doing nine more of them per game, which means we're, we're committing players more. We're finding passes in around the penalty, penalty area to create shots more. Um, and so it's looked it's very, very impressive and it pretty much improved pretty dramatically in every stat there. Yeah, and it kind of bears out in the league table as well, because I've just got a league table of the last 10 games, which is obviously Conte's mm. 10 games. Man City are top with 28 points. Liverpool are second with 23 points, and then Spurs and Man United are joint third and fourth with 21 points. Uh, below that, you look at Wolves on 18 points and Arsenal on 16 points level with Aston Villa. So, but, with, again, but United, we have two games in hand as well in that period, I believe. I'm just talking about the last 10 games. Ah, I'm, OK. I'm looking at a table since Conte got appointed. No, a bit I'm different. just looking at, at all teams' last 10 games. OK, fair enough, yeah. Um, so it bears that out, and what you can see under Conte... We're performing in terms of results wise as a top four team, as a top four side. Yeah. Or close to anyway. Yeah, and um, th I think that shows. But it, but I think especially obviously attacking. That's one of the, it's one of the big criticisms that we've had since Conte's come in. You know, we lack a bit of creativity sometimes. It's hard to break teams down for us. But we, but in terms of att the um, attacking wise, we're definitely may getting more shots on goal. The xG is dramatically higher. We're hurting the opposition a lot more, and importantly, we're getting into the box a lot more. To be honest, yeah, um, you know, people do complain about the lack of creativity on the Conte and stuff like that. But when you compare it to the first, for the 10 games under Nuno, and when you look at what Conte has actually brought to Tottenham Hotspur, I believe the, the creative burden has only been in the games where we've been missing in numbers dramatically. Mm. The other games, we've been, you know, creating chance after chance, more or less. So I think people are very, are handpicking those particular games and getting angry after those particular games. Like, mm. Oh, we're not creating any chances. But that's completely wide off the mark, in my opinion. And I think the um, system that we've got now under Conte is creating is creating a lot of situations that's why you know which is why our xg is a lot higher and obviously uh, we do uh, suffer a bit in terms of quality in terms of creative players but in terms of the system that is the context put in place that definitely creates chances and um that it's def that definitely helps in the dr dramatic improvement in the, ch the quality of chances we're creating even though you could argue that we're missing an ericsson or whatever um there's still the system is creating chances for exactly. us exactly um i think conte's come in he's already imprinted in a, a system and a belief for us to be able to defend well and attack well. And I think mm. that shows out in the stats. It shows out in the last 10 games in the league, you know, on par with um, even Liverpool on par with. We're only two points behind Liverpool in the last 10 games since Conte has come in, mm. which is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, who would have thought that, especially how good Liverpool are going this season. But it's not just offensively. If you look at... Um, 
how we're doing at keeping the ball out of the net as well and the chances we're conceding, it's also massively improved. Um, the expected goals against, 1.3 under Nuno, which isn't terrible, but 0.83 under Conte is massively improved. Shots against, 14.5 to 11.3, so allowing less shots. Shots on target, 4.2 to 3.5 under Conte, so only a slight improvement there. Touches inside the Spurs box, 28.7 to 20.3, so eight less touches inside the uh, Tottenham box under Conte tackles in our own defensive third 9.5 under Nuno 6.4 under Conte so we're making less tackles in our defensive and, and third let's remind everyone this is with the same defence that Jose Mourinho couldn't get a tune out of mm -hmm. Nuno could, I mean look we didn't concede that many goals under Nuno but still the defensive shape didn't look great mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about Eric Dyer, a player that um, fans were happily uh, to put aside Ben Davis, a player that people were happy to put aside Davinson Sanchez a player that people were happy to put aside Christian Romero's come in, but he's only had one league game under Conte, so you can't really put him in the question. Mm -hmm. You're talking about... Yeah, it's these... all without Romero, pretty exactly. much, yeah. And so bringing in Romero to this team is going to make a hell of a difference as well. Yeah, and the last stat there, tackles inside the attacking third, 2.3 under Nuno and 3 under Conte, which is quite um, nearly a third improvement there um, for tackle. So we're clearly pressing a lot higher up the pitch. We're clearly... Um, um, as you can saw against Brighton, we're definitely our pressing is a lot more intense, a lot more aggressive. And I think it will get even more aggressive as the season goes on, as we get to grips with how Conte wants to play. Mm. But I think um, the very telling stats, touches inside the box dropped dramatically. We were, we were giving teams way too much encouragement and it was, we were way too easy to play against yeah. under Nuno, even in, the, even in the games where we won. I've always felt like um, we, we weren't defending that well. We were way too easy to attack and we were too passive. Um, so that is important. win a game under Nuno, like, convincingly absolutely convincing where you would have thought we really deserved to win the game today like because every game we won was just by the odd goal uh sometimes mm. it came luckily and you know like that Watford game for instance yes we probably deserved the win that day but the goal came just by Sonny just with a free kick that goes all the way through uh the Man City game was probably the best Spurs game under Con under Nuno where we actually deserved the win and we played well but after that every other win mm. was pretty lucky wasn't it yeah, even like the Newcastle game, we won, but like we let it, we get we we were squeaky bum time at the end. We let it go back to three two against Villa. We it was a pretty decent performance, and we won. But you know, we let it get back to one one, and uh, we could have easily not won that game. Like, uh, and I think it took an own goal for us to win. So yeah, it happened a lot. Game we uh, we they played better than us that day. Definitely, they definitely deserved the win there. So um, it's definitely been uh, it was definitely a hard slog under under Nuno, but under Conte, um, we we're, we're just. Uh, the, the, the great thing is at the moment in our own defensive third we're controlling things a lot better we're not allowing opposition uh, teams to get into our defensive third anywhere near as much as under contact I think tackles in our defensive third is a very big one because if you're making too many tackles in your defensive third like we were under Jose it's putting too much pressure under our, on our defenders and under Conte if you see that it's dropped quite quite dramatically to under you know three less tackles yeah, in our big. defensive third it just means that um, we're, we're not allowing opposition to get into to our defensive third as much as we used to under Nuno and that's a, that's allowing us to have a lot much much stronger defence and you see that that's why our XG conceded only 0.83 less than a goal um, a game of, of expected goals um, which is brilliant considering our XG under Conte is 2.13 as well what's going to be really interesting is to see both these attacking stats and defensive stats after the next 10 games as well because after the next 10 games you would have we would have played everyone in the Premier League well mm. we would expect anyway if the, if the games uh, work out like that with the suspensions and everything like that but if these stats which i imagine they will be still like this or even improved then uh you know after a good transfer window in the summer who knows what can happen with spurs exactly and yeah those defensive stats as you say still have romero to come back we still have even more time um with conte to to really figure out um the best ways of playing with with the players we have and uh, clearly the more time we have on the training pitch the better we're getting and there's that i mean Obviously, uh, taking the fixtures into account, there has been a drastic improvement in the underlying stats, not just the results under Conte. And that's yeah. interesting to see. Definitely. And it was something that we were all uh, very worried about under Nuno. Even when we were winning games, people who, on social media were calling it out because of the stats and stuff like that. We spoke about it quite regularly. So now we're kind of marrying good stats 
with good um, points and good wins as well. So hopefully it continues. But that is kind of what we mm. wanted to assess today. We wanted to see the stats between the difference in the first 10 games under Nuno to the first 10 games mm. under Conte. And the stats bear out with what you're seeing with your eyes, really. And I remember when we were seeing early days under Nuno, like there were problems that we were seeing on the pitch. And the, and the stats were backing up what we were seeing, into, even though we were winning games, back, the stats were backing up what the problems we were having. And now under Conte, we're seeing drastic improvements with our eyes and the stats are completely backing that up as well. Exactly. So, it's, so it's really great to see and hopefully that continues. But look, we've got a whole second half of the season uh, now. So now January's over. It's 18 league games to go and an FA Cup run. It's all to play for, but that's pretty much uh, the state of play now. 10 games each and halfway through. So let's hope for a big second half of the season. Definitely. I mean, if we can repeat the points tally in the last 10 games over the next 10 games, I mean, you would probably think that top four is a massive possibility, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think that's pretty much uh, over two points a game, which should, which usually um, are given, yeah, usually makes top four. Mm. All right. Well, that is our comparison video today. I want to know your thoughts on um, Nuno's first 10 games and the comparison we have done with Conte's first 10 games in the comment section below. We've also got some brand new content coming your way tonight. We've got a podcast called the Tottenham Hour podcast with myself, my brother, uh, David Harris, the Irish Hotspur and Matt Hayes as well. It's going to be a weekly podcast live from 7 p.m. tonight talking all things Tottenham. So look forward to seeing you all there thank you everyone for joining today like subscribe and comment and as always come on, on you spurs, spurs.